Hi everyone, Scott here, and this is the teaser to our full presentation, 3D CAD options, choosing the right solution. That is a CAD representation of my off-road Nimbus unicycle. And today we're going to be uh, taking a look at it with 3D Experience SOLIDWORKS and also making some design changes. So the seat uh, has been roughed out for an approximate shape, but if you take a close look in that detail view, I certainly wouldn't want to sit on it. <laughs> and I don't want to deal with the surfacing tools inside of SOLIDWORKS. We need some really nice curvature continuous geometry. And uh, that sounds like a job for Scott. And the whole time we'll be collaborating with 3D Experience SOLIDWORKS. We're going to be leveraging the 3D Experience CAD applications and collaboration capabilities. With all that being said, let's go take a look at SOLIDWORKS. Here you can see my model. This is 3D Experience SOLIDWORKS. The only thing that might look a little bit different here is this pane over here on the right-hand side. So we've got our top level assembly. Here's the seat, right? It's missing a few components. It needs to be smoothed out. So Scott's gonna take over the screen and uh, we'll see what the files look like on his end. And you're gonna be using 3D Sculptor first, correct? That's correct. I think if there's one takeaway from this presentation, if you learned mm -hmm. one thing, it's this right here, uh, the most important, where Jacob designed this unicycle in SOLIDWORKS, and then he uploaded it to the, the cloud vault. I'm accessing that cloud vault with 3D Sculptor, and I'm able to open up his assembly. This is not a copy of it. This is not a pack and go. This is not a you know presentation magic where we just fake it. And this is real. So. When I make a change, he's going to see it. When he makes a change, I'm going to see it. And you see that I actually have multiple tabs open, so I can have like my individual parts that I'm working on, and I can have my assembly all at the same time. So it's a really, really easy interface to, to pop in and out of. And so this is the seat I came up with. And before you start making fun of me, Jacob, because I know you're going to, <laughs> um, I want to show that I'm actually using sketch pictures. So if you're familiar with this uh, this process inside of SOLIDWORKS, um, it's mm -hmm. it's the same process where we can take a image, uh, bring that in as a picture, and then reference it. And here I'm just referencing this image just for just basic. You see, I didn't follow it exactly, but I just wanted like a concept. Like I've never made a seat, a bicycle seat before, and so right. I'm like, okay, I kind of think it's going to look like this, and so I use this imagery uh, to do that. So it's it's just um an easy way to, uh, to you know, reference and, um, and then use that image. And when we look at this, I can see Jacob's design, the frame uh, where the seat needs to attach, and I can reference items from SOLIDWORKS. So I can actually reference edges and vertices while I'm making my design. Really, really cool. I'm, I'm, I love how this, these two applications connect together. Now, all that being said, that's great, but we need to make some adjustments to this. Yeah. So I don't know if you saw my original seat, but usually unicycles will have a bit more of a saddle shape. So it'll be sort of a U-ish shape. Are you able to take like the front section there and just bring it up? And another thing too is I don't, I want to try to avoid losing curvature continuity because the surface contouring is really important for me here. So... This, if you're if you're a let's say a Rhino user, uh, Rhino uses NURBS. This is not NURBS. Um, this is a subdimensional. Uh, I'm sorry, sub subdivision. Uh, subdivision. Geometry, yeah. Which it's going to uh, uh, keep my curvature continuous um, curves. And if I mess up, it will let me know. I'll get a little pop up down here and be like, "Are you sure you want to do that?" Um, because you because your surface is bad now. Yeah, you basically <laughs> tweaked it to the point of it not having that continuity okay um, yeah, i like that shape yeah and then usually um it's there's sort of like a figure eight type of contour so you might want to narrow the back and expand the front a little bit okay. here gotcha so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to you'll see that right now I'm, I'm actually uh selecting these like edges so i can select these edges i can select vertices i can select faces i have a lot of control over you know how i'm going to manipulate this so mm -hmm. maybe I'll like, pull those in. Yeah, maybe I want to bring that down a little bit just to kind of shape it. And um, yeah, that's, like, yeah, like there that. you go. That's looking pretty good. 
And then I think this seat in the back, it's probably a little bit big, right? Yeah, can you pull those faces in? Is that going to be easy? I notice it's adjusting symmetrically too. I really like that. Yeah, for a seat, it probably should, right? So yeah, and there and you can actually make a, a, a line of symmetry. So when you modify one side, it's going to modify the other automatically. How's how's yeah. that looking? I think that's pretty good. We can do a couple more revisions later, but I think that's a pretty good start. And I think it gives every everybody here a good idea of how the tool works as well. Yeah, I, and you know, I'm not a surfacing expert in SolidWorks, but I would never be able to do this in SolidWorks. Maybe some people can, but I definitely not, especially maintaining curvature continuity as well. That's yeah. pretty impressive. All right, so can I can I bring this back into SolidWorks now? Yeah. So I should Absolutely. be good to go, right? Do you need to do anything on your end before I can see it? Uh, no, I just saved it. You should be good. I do have it checked out still, but I'd like to show that on your screen. So back in SolidWorks, it looks like nothing has changed. So what what do I do from here? It's unlocked. Okay. It's unlocked. So now when you uh, refresh this, boom. There it goes. Just like Okay, so now I can just bring it down. Mm -hmm. so, so reload now, that from the server. Yep, so now if you were to make changes and stuff, you were able, you're able to lock it, right? So you can actually see those changes. Gotcha. And that's the data management. And it literally yeah. works that fast. So it's... Uh, okay. So we'll go ahead and bring that in. What was that? four seconds, five seconds, and there's the seat. So if you recognize this dialogue, this is actually using 3D interconnect. So there's no translation that's required here. It's not gonna you know, ask you to fix a bunch of surfacing errors because it's just reading the geometry indirectly. And there's the seat. So that imported, we'll give it a second to load, and there you go. Now, Scott, you must have suppressed my seat or hidden it because it I was a direct it. replacement. That's that's awesome. But I still have the original seat here too if I need that for reference for yeah. anything. But, but now, think about that. Sorry to cut you off there, mm -hmm. but think about that. I used a different application to modify your uh, your assembly tree. Assembly I hit a component. Top level. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it's, that's, this is new technology. Like, we've never been able yeah. to do that before. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to dive further into 3D CAD options, choosing the right solution, click the link below for the full session.